Well, good morning. This is uh, Ian R. Crane. It's the morning of Wednesday, the 26th of September, 2018. And this morning's broadcast is titled The Rapidly Fading Charade of British Democracy. And later this morning, in the courts at Preston in Lancashire, four men face the prospect of being sentenced to custodial sentences for a non-violent direct action, a peaceful protest, lorry surfing effectively, climbing onto vehicles that were delivering kit to the frack site at uh, Preston New Road. Now, although they were uh, up on the trucks for, I think, uh, collectively something in the region of uh, uh, from start to finish about 99 hours and uh, caused some disruption, although not uh, necessarily critical because the road was uh, kept open in that time. But nonetheless, as I observed at the time, I sensed that they were left on the truck deliberately to create a precedent to give the police the opportunity to charge them under the Public Order Act for public nuisance and therefore bring about the prospect of a custodial sentence. Now, I'm not convinced that the, uh, the judge was taken in by the prosecution's case for custodial sentences and uh, one can only hope that Judge Altam, Robert Altam, has actually slept on it and will today make the correct decision. Because in a democracy, in a true democracy, there is only one correct decision here, and that is not to apply a custodial sentence. And in fact, you know, this country has a history of protest, and it's acknowledged that protest is a fundamental aspect of democracy. But we have to go back some 80 years before there was even a hint of custodial sentence for protest. And that's uh, back at the uh, Kinder Scout protest of 1932. And this was back when the, uh, the workers in the years between the two major wars of the 20th century felt that they were restricted from leaving the uh, industrialized cities of the north and walking up on the moorlands. So in 1932, in fact on April 24th, 1932, some 400 walked up to Kinder Scout. And uh, in fact the landowners, uh, I think it was primarily the Duke of Devonshire, recruited a whole bunch of uh, gamekeepers, of course today that would be G4S, and uh, basically confronted the protesters with sticks and um, you know, uh, some combat ensued. And the five people that were arrested and sentenced and received custodial sentences of between, I think it was two and uh, five months, were ostensibly charged, convicted and sentenced for their, their role in the affray with the gamekeepers, not for the protest. So roll the clock forward 80 years to uh, 2018, or 86 years, isn't it? 2018, and yet we're turning the clock back. We're turning the clock back to the point where the corporations, the power, the uh, current day version of the East India Company wields the authority that prevents people from having any say against their activities. And the irony, of course, is that at Preston New Road, the democratic process was undermined right from the get go, right from uh, July 2015, when Lancashire County Council rejected Quadrilla's application to establish two frack sites in the Fylde Peninsula, one at Preston New Road and uh, one at Rossica. 
So uh, Sai Javid gets involved and uh, establishes public inquiries. The uh, planning inspector, of course, is a safe pair of hands and uh, rules outright that permission should be granted for Quadrilla to frack at Preston New Road, uh, but uh, uh, held back on uh, Rossica. Uh, but uh, Zai Javid basically later stated that he was minded to grant permission to frack at uh, Rossica as well. Now, Sai Javid was put into politics by Deutsche Bank. Here is a man whose career was, to some extent, meteoric within the banking profession. And then he gives up a career paying him literally seven figures per annum to go into politics. I don't think so. He was put into politics to push the agenda of the, uh, the financial establishment, uh, particularly, obviously, in the uh, aftermath of the global financial collapse. So Sai Javid runs, rush, runs roughshod over the democratic process of Lancashire County Council. So, funnily enough, there's some community opposition because the community has done their research and, uh, you know, they're not impressed by this industry that is, has literally left a trail of devastation wherever it has established a footprint across the planet. So, four people in front of um, Judge Holtham today and uh, those four people are Rich Loiseau, Simon Roscoe Blevins, Richard Roberts and Julian Brock. And are these four people going to be the first people to be sentenced to custodial sentences for a peaceful direct action? And if this is the case, then it will it, it should wake up people like the uh, sentencing of the five people back in 90, uh, 1932, which resulted in 10,000 people marching up onto the moors. And uh, that eventually led to the um, uh, Rights of Way Act, I think, that, that uh, Tony Blair's government introduced in, in uh, 2000. It took a while, but that's what protected or protects now the rights of people to access open countryside uh, in the UK. But here, what we are looking at today is the prima facie evidence that it's not the landowners today, it's the corporatists, the global corporatists. And actually, in this case, using tin pot cowboy outfits like Quadrilla, like IGAS like Angus, you know, like Europa. I won't put Ineos in that bracket. They're uh, a little bit more robust. But these other companies, no substance behind them whatsoever. And they are simply operating on the basis that a handful of people might make out like bandits. The likelihood of the country ever seriously benefiting from this industry is zero. The likelihood of a legacy of devastation, destruction, the loss of agriculture, the loss of tourism, and the long-term negative health impacts on the communities who have the misfortune to live in those areas is pretty much a given. It's a guarantee. Now, even if Judge Altam does the right thing today, which is basically um, uh, just find them, that's what it should be. But let's assume that he takes it a step further and awards suspended sentences. This is just the next step before the corporations achieve their goals through injunctions in the civil courts. And of course, what we are witnessing is that the commercial courts are effectively also now riding roughshod over parliamentary democracy by establishing a raft of legislation that uh, basically says that uh, criminal law doesn't go far enough and uh, we're going to apply laws dreamed up by judges that give the corporations absolute supremacy over the health and well-being of the wider population. And this is 
precisely why these injunctions have to be challenged. And of course, uh, in theory and probably in practice, those in breach of these injunctions run the risk of having their assets seized to compensate the companies for any loss they claim. Or if they have no assets, then the corporation's calling for loss of liberty. Well, maybe that's what it's going to take. Just as the five people in 1932 who lost their liberty for between two and six months led to the mass movement of people demanding access to the open countryside. Now, perhaps what it's going to take, God forbid, but maybe it's going to take the loss of liberty for people right across the country to comprehend that what we are facing is literally a corporate grab of everything about this country, not just its resources, but about the, uh, the access to land, about the right to bury whatever they want to bury beneath the land. And anyone who has the audacity to challenge this because they're concerned about the long-term health and well-being of the communities or of their families, of their descendants, then they run the risk of getting jailed. The UK right now is on the cusp of descent into a prima facie corporatocratic state with the aid of the judiciary. Parliamentary democracy is proving to be an absolute charade. And it is going to be down to each and every one of us, of the people of this country, to let it be known that this is not acceptable and it will not be taken lying down. And if it means that some people have to lose their liberty, then sadly, I'm afraid that that will perhaps be the springboard that is needed for people who are time poor. They are run ragged trying to earn just enough to keep, a food, keep food on the table and a roof over their head. For those of uh, my generation who are working in the corporatocracy or working in the judiciary or in government, it's time for some very, very serious reflection and consider what it is that you are either doing or not doing to protect the long-term health and well-being of the people of this country. Because attempting to establish an unconventional hydrocarbons industry in this country, the evidence from elsewhere around the world would suggest that that is absolutely not in the best interests of the people of this country. But it is, of course, in the best interests of a handful of corporatists. It's in perhaps the best interests of those who are lending money to these businesses at probably outrageous interest rates, because ultimately they'll go for the land grab. Thanks for joining me today. Watch very closely uh, what happens at Preston Court uh, today. The um, sentencing hearing is uh, scheduled to start, I think, at 10 o'clock. Uh, so by lunchtime, we should know the uh, fate handed down by Judge Alton. And uh, we'll know for sure whether democracy is effectively being well and truly buried in this country. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you tomorrow morning at 8.30.